This is a video response to Cat's Cradle's video where she showed things that she's canned. A uh, few other people have also sent in video responses and I've really enjoyed watching those videos because it gives you ideas of things you can can and ways that you can use them. So I'm doing this video response of my own. Uh, as you can see, I have uh, canned uh, quite a few things. So I'm going to try to make this as fast as possible. Uh, the first thing, I'm going to start with the meats, and um, of course, there's canned chicken. Uh, I believe I'm the only person on YouTube that pre-cooks their meats before they can them. Um, but I just can't stand the looks of meat that has been canned raw. Uh, if you're new to canning, and if there's only one meat you're going to can, be sure to can chicken because you can use it a hundred different ways. Um, and I thought that um, if we had to rely solely on canned meats, that we would probably get tired of meat that has been chopped up and cubed uh, pretty quickly. So because of that, I've tried to can meats uh, in larger pieces to break up the monotony. So I've also canned large pieces of chicken breast. I took boneless, skinless chicken breast and I sliced them in half so that they wouldn't be so thick and then I browned them on each side so they were just about cooked through put them in the jar, added chicken broth and processed them and I used these um, for uh, barbecued chicken. I'll take the breast out, put them in a pan, cover them with barbecue sauce and bake them till they're all heated through and uh, this is just like barbecued chicken and the one thing that bothers me about this is that it wastes so much space in the jar. So it's occurred to me recently that what I should do when I can them is to add, chop up some chicken and put some chicken bits in here. And then when I use the large pieces, I can take the chicken bits and the broth, save that aside, and make chicken soup the next day. So from here on out, that's the way I'll be canning these breaths. I also can turkey. Um, they practically give turkeys away at Thanksgiving. I just bake the turkey as usual, pull the meat off the bone, fill the jars, add chick um, turkey broth, and process it. And I also can the any additional broth that I have. And for beef, I can. Um, cubes of beef to use in soups and stews and such. And I also can um, pot roast. I can the beef in large pieces. And um, second, the chicken. This is my favorite. Um, I love this pot roast. It tastes like the best pot roast ever. And um, oddly enough, even though you use the same um, cuts of meat for each of these, they taste totally different. This tastes like a roast, and this tastes like um, beef that you would use in stews and, and such. And I have a video showing how I can the roast. I've also canned hamburger, and this is not one of my favorite canned things, but um, you, know, you almost can't do without hamburger. And it takes on kind of a dog food smell and taste, which I don't like. But I found that you can kind of um, lessen that some by browning the beef and then um, putting it in boiling water. And um, that also helps to remove some of the fat. And the other thing I don't like about the hamburger is that it gets so tender when it's processed that it's kind of kind of mushy and it's just um it's just not like hamburger and I know a lot of people say well it's just different well we're not big on different around here so but I do have plenty of hamburger in case it's needed and another thing that I've canned that I really don't like and will never do again is um I can some chopped steaks I brown them put them in the jar and added broth and processed and they taste like liver if you like liver get yourself some chopped steaks and can it because that's what it tastes like to me and pork I have um, 
canned pork in cubes to use in soups and stews. And I've also canned pork roast. I do this the same way as I do the um, pot roast. And I should have the pot roast video if you, if you care to see that. I also cut some pork into pork chops. And this didn't work out as well as I had hoped. Um, what I planned on doing was taking the pork chops out, dredging them in flour, and then browning them, and hopefully ending up with uh, what we think of as a pork chop. But the thing is, they get so tender that it really isn't like a pork chop once they're canned. Uh, it's not bad, it's just that it doesn't have that, that tough texture of a pork chop anymore. But these would probably be good done the same as those chicken breasts just put them in the oven cover them with barbecue sauce and bake them and um can also just chop up the uh pork and make barbecue with it i've also canned bacon and i've done it raw and i found the way that i like it the best is to cook the bacon halfway through before i can it and then that way when I take it out of the jar, the bacon is like semi-crispy. Uh, if you haven't canned bacon, it doesn't fry in the jar. It cooks, but it's not fried. And um, by frying it halfway through, I found that it, it gives you the opportunity to remove a lot of the grease. And because the bacon that sits in it tends to get kind of soggy. And when you take it out, it'll be like semi-fried, and then you can fry it completely. I found that um, doing this way, I like it a lot better. I also tried canning sausage. I made sausage patties, browned them, put them in the jar, filled it with water, and processed. I don't like these at all. These taste like cat food. And after I did that, I found that you shouldn't can things that have sage in it. Uh, so that could be a lot of the problem there. I also can smoke smoked ham, and just like Cat's Cradle said, it does not taste like ham. It doesn't taste bad, but it doesn't taste like ham. It loses that fine ham texture, and the texture is much more like beef. And um, it has kind of a salty, smoky flavor, but it's not ham. And um, Here's something I haven't seen anybody else can either. And I was real hesitant to can this for the first time, but this is shrimp. And this is excellent, absolutely excellent. But if you can shrimp, be sure to follow the directions to the letter. Um, and the same goes for all seafood because seafood is grown in dirty water. And you have to be meticulous about canning this to make sure that it's safe. And um, the direct, I, you can get the directions for canning shrimp from the Ball Blue book. And it says, I don't remember if you soak it in vinegar or cook it in vinegar. But I was afraid to, to follow that recipe because of the vinegar. I thought, you know, the shrimp would end up tasting like vinegar. You don't taste vinegar at all. And um, I was afraid that the shrimp would end up either rubbery or fall completely apart. But it cooks to perfection. These are nice and tender, and um, they hold their shape well. And uh, use this in fried rice or um, shrimp creole. And uh, the Ball Blue Book also has a creole sauce. Combine these with some rice, and you have an excellent meal. I've also canned ham and bean soup. 15 bean soup. I cooked this too long. It's fallen all to pieces, but it's still good. And I've also canned um, vegetable beef soup. And I found that if you want a vegetable beef soup or any soup that has meat in it, it's best to just can the vegetables separate from the meat because the processing time for the meat is so long that these vegetables end up kind of mushy. And um, so what I would recommend for a vegetable beef soup is to can mixed vegetables separately and add your meat and some tomatoes. 
And if you wanted um, corn in your soup, I would say to can the corn with the beef because corn has a real long processing time. Those two would can well together. So when you can um, anything like mixed vegetables, you need to use the processing time for whichever vegetable in the jar takes the longest. And I've canned tomato sauce and tomatoes, green beans, um, peas and carrots. Green beans are excellent canned and if I warn you, if you can green beans, you'll never be happy with store-bought green beans again because they, um, the store-bought taste like metal and um, the home canned are so much better. Also canned carrots and potatoes and um, for a lot of things I use carrots and potatoes in the same dish so I started canning potatoes and carrots together in quarts and this way I only use half as many jars, half as many lids and have to run half as many canner loads so that saves a lot of um, money in jars I've canned sweet potatoes Home canned sweet potatoes are a hundred times better than store-bought canned sweet potatoes. They have a very pure, clean taste to them. And if you try these and um, try the store-bought, the store-bought will taste dirty to you from there on out. I've canned baked beans. And um, I had always been hesitant to can baked beans because... The store-bought ones are so cheap, it just doesn't make sense to me to can them, but lately when you get a can of um, baked beans, they're like almost all sauce and no beans, so I uh, use the recipe from the ball book, ball book for that. And Zucchini, um, the USDA no longer... They have withdrawn their recommendations for canning zucchini because they can't determine a proper processing time for zucchini. Now, they can put a man on the moon, but they can't figure out how long to process zucchini. <coughs> now, um, one of the problems, they say, is that when the zucchini cooks, it can compress down and become so compact and so dense that the heat may not penetrate to the center of the jar. Now there's recipes out there on the internet for canning um, tomatoes and zucchini and this is just my theory but I, I think that having the tomatoes in there alleviates the problem of the zucchini compacting and becoming very dense. That The tomato sauce fills the voids. So I was comfortable canning zucchini um, this way and um, you have to make that choice for yourself. This is not USDA approved. And I also have a canning book, um, Putting Food By is the name of it, and they tell how to can zucchini in there. This recipe that's on the internet has the same processing time that is recommended in that book. And another zucchini items. I mean, you know, you end up with tons of zucchini. And this is another internet recipe. It's pineapple zucchini. You cook the zucchini in pineapple juice and add lemon juice and can it, and it tastes just like pineapple. You can also shred the zucchini, and it ends up like crushed pineapple. Again, this is not USDA approved. Use your own judgment on that. Another thing that has density issues is pumpkin. They say never to can pureed pumpkin because it can become so dense that the heat won't penetrate to the center of the jar. <clears throat> when you can pumpkin, you should always can it in cubes. And as you can see, as it cooks, it becomes, um, you see I started out with cubes and it gets kind of slushy. If I shook it up enough, it would be a puree. But, um... Use this in pumpkin bread. I have 
um, fruits that I've canned. I have peaches. I have apples. And um, I wanted this for apple pies. And initially I canned apples. They say to um, cook the apples for a few minutes first and then can it to use for apple pies. But as you can see, it ends up um, more like uh, applesauce. So these I did raw pack. And you, as you can see, they're floating. When you raw pack foods, very often they will float because the foods have air in them. And when you cook them, the air comes out. And um, that's why they're floating. So if you have fruits that float, chances are it's because you pack them raw. I also have um, applesauce that I made from crab apples, and this is real good. It's like applesauce with a zing. I have um, cherries. I don't have access to any tart pie cherries, so I bought sweet cherries when they were on sale, and I've canned those in a syrup. These are good. I've canned grapes, believe it or not. Um, just white grapes canned in a syrup. These are good on um, vanilla ice cream. I've canned um, grapefruit and oranges, and this is excellent. I have a video on that, and um, surprisingly, the they taste like fresh fruit when you open the jar, and the grapefruit still tastes like grapefruit, and the oranges taste like oranges, and uh, the syrup is uh, tastes like grapefruit juice, only it's not real tart, and it's not real sweet. It's real good. I've canned plums. I have some old plum trees that are about to die from old age, and the plums just get smaller and smaller every year. And I found that when I can plums, if I can them with the peels on, they become very um, bitter. So I actually peeled all these little plums and canned them. And I also have um, some plums that I pickled. And somebody wrote to me some time ago and asked if I had ever pickled peaches that they love pickled peaches and they're hard to find in the stores and um, yeah I have canned pickled peaches before and I found that um, these pickled plums are almost identical to the um, pickled peaches and I actually like them better because of the small size. Um, I have pickled beets and I have um, Chow Chow. This is excellent on um, hot dogs. It's uh, cabbage, onions, green tomatoes, and bell peppers. And I also like to put it on um, kielbasa on a roll with some mustard. That's real good. I love Chow Chow. Then I have peppers that I've canned. Strawberry pancake syrup. This is good on pancakes and waffles. I have crab apple jelly. This is good. It tastes a lot like um, strawberry jelly. And I have some blueberry jam that I just canned. And actually, this is a blooper because I really wanted it to be um, blueberry pancake syrup. but And I used half of the required amount of pectin hoping that I would end up with syrup but instead it's set so I have um, jam instead so next time I'm going to cut back on that pectin even more and hopefully that will work and I have cranberry sauce this is a hundred times better than store bought cranberry sauce too the um, store bought will taste bitter to you after you've tasted that and last but not least I have um, walnuts canned in a syrup and I use this on ice cream you know those little bitty jars of nuts you can buy for ice cream sundaes well that's what this is and if you look in the ball book um, their praline syrup recipe that's what this is and um, I went a little heavier on the nuts than what the, their recipe calls for but this is real good so that's the things I've canned. Um, if you have any questions, just ask. And uh, 
get out there and get busy and do some canning. Hope it helps.